This is part three of our KTM two-stroke top end rebuild. If you need help with this assembly and the power valve, please watch part one and two of this series. Now, just before we throw on the cylinder, we're gonna go ahead and check this crankshaft, make sure it's within spec. Otherwise, we may have to tear down and replace the crankshaft. So we'll go ahead, take the connecting rod, move it back and forth, and then also we'll spin the crankshaft, make sure it's not binding. And always be sure and reference your service manual for the proper specs and measurements on the crankshaft. Now that we have the power valve assembly completely assembled in the cylinder, next we have to install a piston, base gasket, and our cylinder. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So now we'll grab our piston and begin to install our rings. When we install the rings, we need to check on the ring to see if there are any letters or any identifying marks that will point in the upwards direction. On this vertex piston, we have a N, and so that N will be facing upwards. So we'll go ahead and install that. Now when installing the rings, I like taking one end and installing it just next to one of those locating dowels inside of the ring grooves and slowly rotate the ring around until it falls into place. And then we'll just repeat the process for the second ring. Now before we get this piston installed on the connecting rod, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install one circ clip into the piston and then it'll make installation on the connecting rod a lot easier. So KTM recommends that the orientation of these circ clips is with the opening either facing up or facing down. They don't want it forward or back. Now it's time for us to grab some two-stroke oil, lube up the wrist pin bearing, the wrist pin itself, and the wrist pin mating surfaces in the piston and on the connecting rod. Now as we go to install the piston, it's a great idea to fill this crankcase area with some rags. We don't want our wrist pin bearing or circ clip falling inside. Now I'm just about ready to install a piston, but I need to make sure that I follow the directions on the piston. On the piston, there's this arrow that's always going to face towards the exhaust, so I need to make sure I get this right. Now that we've pushed the wrist pin through the piston, through the wrist pin bearing, and it's all the way seated against the other circ clip, now it's time to install the last circ clip. Again, we want to be careful not to drop it in the crankcase. To install the circ clip, place one of the open-ended sides inside the groove of the piston. Uh, then we'll squeeze it together until it pops into place. Just be patient, this is kind of tricky, and be careful not to scratch up your piston. Now that we have our piston properly installed, we're going to go ahead and install a base gasket. For this application right now, I'm going to install a 0.5 millimeter base gasket, and then I'm going to install the cylinder. Before I install it, I'm going to lube it up with some two-stroke premix oil. And then one thing to be sure of is to make sure that the piston rings are located in those locating dowels on the piston. Take your time when reinstalling the cylinder so that you don't damage the piston or the rings. Before we continue, make sure the piston and rings move up and down freely in the cylinder. Now that we have the cylinder set into place, now would be a great time to grab the four nuts, put them on, and then torque them in a crisscross manner to OEM spec. After you do that, it's a great time to check your X dimension, which would be your deck height. We've now torqued those nuts to 25.8 foot pounds, and now we need to find top dead center. So we can turn the flywheel and raise it until it's about there. So we can take this tool and on the opposite end of what we used for the Z measurement, we can stick one or both of these locating dowels in one of the O-ring grooves. I prefer to stick it in an inside O-ring groove. This gives me a little more material to measure off of. Once I get this tool in place, I can then turn the flywheel and see if it raises up this tool at all. I don't want it to raise up, but I want it to get it as close as I can as possible. So once I find that point, I can then take my feeler gauges and see how far exactly it is away from the piston top. Now KTM recommends that our X dimensions or the deck height 
is an exact zero up to 0.1 millimeter of clearance. And this clearance is going to be the clearance between the piston and the deck height at top dead center. So once we find our top dead center, let's start with these feeler gauges. Now I just tried to measure with this 0 0.09 millimeter feeler gauge and I'm not able to fit inside, which is good news because this was in spec. So I'll go from there and find out what my exact clearance is. Okay, so we've worked our way down the feeler gauge and I'm, right now I'm at a 0 0.003 millimeter. So I'll go through, put that under, and that's the clearance that I have. So I'm well within spec. If I had too much clearance, more than that 0.1 millimeter, what I'd have to do is I'd have to go to a smaller base gasket in order to lower the deck height, giving me proper clearance. If for some reason, when I'm at top dead center, it pushes my tool up, then I would have to go with a bigger base gasket or even add multiple base gaskets together in order to find that proper clearance. If you need a different size base gasket, check out the OEM diagrams on our website. They've got a few different options to choose from. Now that I have the cylinder torqued down to spec, all I have to do is put on the cylinder head, upper motor mount, both power valve covers. I'm going to install the push rod on the other side for the power valve, and then I'm going to install some radiator hoses. Now installing the O-rings or head gaskets onto these KTMs, if for some reason they are not quite stretched enough and they don't sit into the groove nicely, lightly stretch them. Once we get that stretched, we can then put it back into place and it should sit nicely inside the groove. Now when I go to install the cylinder head, I need to make sure both dowels are either in the head or the cylinder and then make sure that the radiator hose fitting is facing forwards towards the exhaust. I can then take the cylinder head bolts, put new washers on them, and then go ahead and throw them in the cylinder head. Now that I have those hand tightened, I'll go ahead and torque them to 19.9 foot-pounds in a crisscross pattern. Now we'll go ahead and install the left power valve cover. Need to make sure we install a new gasket and then we'll go ahead and thread these bolts on by hand. Now we can go ahead and tighten these to 4.4 foot-pounds. And then we'll go ahead and move to the other side. Now before I install the power valve push rod, I need to install the gasket. Once we have this gasket into place, we can take the power valve push rod and locate it up with this knob. If for some reason the power valve is up out of the way and it can't reach, just take the knob and push it down. We can then put the knob on with a little bit of force, push, and we can hear a click. We can take our retaining pin and up through the left side of this ball, there are going to be two holes, one at the bottom and one at the top. So we slide all the way through, then we can rotate this on the base and lock it into place. From there, we can go ahead and install the cover and torque it down to 4.4 foot-pounds. Now when we go to install the upper motor mount, we need to make sure that we have all the collars in place. I like to stick a little bit of silicone inside just to hold those collars in place. We'll go ahead and install it, thread the bolts in by hand, and then we'll torque them afterwards. Now that I have the radiator hoses, spark plug, and a few other things installed, I'm going to work on the carburetor, regulator, rectifier, and mount, and then I'm going to start working on the ignition cover and stator. 
Moving on to the ignition cover, stator, and starting components, we do need to replace that inner bushing. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Now that we have that bushing replaced, it's time to install our ignition cover and stator. So we're gonna take a new gasket and install it on the cover. I like to install it on the cover because I like putting the dowel pins in the cover. I like greasing up the sealing surface a little bit. That'll help the gasket stick well. And then I'll also grease up the sealing surface on the case. Now, if you're having a hard time lining up the Bendix in both front and rear bushings, one thing you can do is take off this cover, remove the gear, and you'll have a little bit more access to move this Bendix around in order to get this cover to sit flush against the case. And once you have this Bendix lined up in both front and rear bushings, you can go ahead, install some bolts, and then we'll go ahead and torque them afterwards. Now, while we have this upper cover off, it's a good idea to install the starter. We have a new starter O-ring from KTM. However, we have found that these O-rings are quite large and they're hard to get the actual starter inside this orifice. So one thing we have done, we've actually thrown it in the freezer for a little bit and we're gonna grease it up and this should make the install a lot easier. And we'll go ahead and slide that in. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall this outer plate. We'll remove the old gasket, reinstall a new gasket. We'll go ahead and reinstall the plate, making sure that the gears are aligned. Once they're aligned, we can go ahead and install the bolts. Then we can go ahead and torque them to 5.9 foot-pounds. Now before we install the outer plastic cover, we're gonna go ahead and install the starter cable. So we'll unscrew that top nut, route the cable up and onto the post, and then we'll go ahead and tighten it down. Okay, now our last few steps are to wire up the stator, plug in the spark plug, new air filter, battery, gas tank, seat, and then we'll fill it with fluids. So we'll go ahead and do that now, and then we'll be ready to start her up. Now just a quick tip when installing your expansion chamber, I like to throw a little bit of high temp silicone along with the O-rings. This will just help create a better seal. We're now ready to fill this up with fluids. Be sure not to forget this step, it's probably the most important. Be sure and check your service manual for proper specs and capacities. Okay guys, that's it. We've ran this bike through a few heat cycles. Now we're ready to follow KTM's braking procedure. For the first three hours, we're gonna do no more than 70% throttle. And then for the two hours after that, we're gonna stay away from full throttle. If you have any comments or questions, be sure and comment below. And if you wanna see more videos like this on how to keep your two-stroke awesome, be sure and subscribe. I'm Chance with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching.